we have to look at the possibility of the splits here because there's a hierarchy to conditioning that depends, as we know, on the type of split definition. For a quadruple split, again, we have that similarity with the basic split where the bridging gates or traits are, again, the most powerful conditioning elements. And then we go to the undefined center. For the reflector, obviously, undefined center. Quadruple split. Here's the big kicker. <laughs> all right, look at this. There's a quadruple split in front of you. See all the four different activations. They're rarer than reflectors. You don't find very much about quadruple split on the internet. This is David, uh, American actor, writer, producer, director, novelist, singer, songwriter even. What a fascinating design he's got here. That is a beautiful design. Quads, remember, this is four areas of definition. This is someone who most likely will play favorites at work. This is somebody who is not here to be bridged necessarily by the same person because what tends to happen is there's usually two people that they, they favor. And who are they going to favor? Go back to their parents, look at the parents chart, and then find that favorite bridge right there in those people that they really like hanging out with. Okay, you're going to find it. Because remember, with a basic and a quadruple split, there is a specific way that they like to be bridged. They prefer to be bridged. That specific way is what that other person is bringing to the table. More often than not, quads get along with people who have a lot of openness. Why? Because this is the process of assimilation that is more about their own personal experience. It's subjective. So there's not a lot of space for another person to bring in all of their activations and not feel some kind of challenge because both parties are going to be compromised if there's a lot of definition, right? And these are not compromised masters like the reflectors are. These are people who are subjective. They have favorites. Okay. And this is somebody who is de definitely highly sexually driven, as we can see. So let's look at these two different partnerships that uh, Katja found for us. With David, we also have um, Winona Ryder on the top. She was briefly linked to this X-Files star in 1996. They only dated for a short moment in time. Now, Gillian Anderson is an American actress and his X-Files co-star. So when we're looking at these two, here's his bridges that they fill. We'll see there in a moment. Okay, so the bridges that are filled by these two women. Let's look at one, Winona Ryder. We can see that there is a bridge there, that 56. You can see that there's definitely a significant amount of bridging here, although in this there is a little bit of a challenge. Winona is a 4-6 manifesting generator. David is a 2-4 generator. So it's not as bad as if one of them was a non-energy type, particularly a, a projector. Projector in compromise would be challenging. There's a little compromise there, lots there actually. But then we have a lot of connectivity. So there's a lot of um, love attraction or repulsion as well in this dynamic. It's an eight and one have some fun, the one being the ego. They both have the shared commonality of being fours, so that's really interesting. Like, likes, like, you know, but also attraction to difference. The four six is so different from a two four, even though they're both personal destiny, life fulfillment. The two four is conscious personality on the lower trigram, for six, both of those lines are upper trigram, okay? So personality and design with regards to nodes is what Yelena is asking about. Do they tell something? The seven and the two and the 13 two right there. What do you guys notice about what Yelena has picked out for us? Does it tell something that we have this and this being exactly the same gates. Do you remember? It can be any side. There we go. Karmic. Yes, he is designed to populate her environment in this dynamic. There is a karmic connection. Karmic can be for a moment. It can be for a lifetime. Who knows? But there's definitely, he is designed to be on her path. 
okay? As far as the fulfillment of purpose. Where she fulfills her purpose is with people like him. Another way of saying that. Okay, so new way of looking at this. Thank you so much for that, Katja. Again, you can see David's chart being brought in, and now we can see what Winona brings to the table and how she bridges his split. Okay, back to the thematic of what Ra teaches. What tends to happen is that the quadruple split likes two different kinds of ways of being bridged, usually two favorites. In this example, Winona Ryder in his life completely bridged up into a single definition. Did it last? No. Does it mean that all quads being bridged up by one person not going to last? No, it doesn't. I remember the very first person quad that I had in my practice was a quadruple split emotional generator with that channel. That channel was the only thing that was un unconscious in his design. Everything else projected channels consciously defined. He did not identify one way with being an emotional generator, of course. So what I found was a lot of the activations that I had, he also had in his uh, closest friends, family members, and he also disproved the theory to me about Ross saying, and I don't know how theoretical it was or consistent, quads are just so rare we don't know very much about them because they hardly are around and then it's even rarer to find them in human design studying avidly. What he told me was that he had a best friend in his life that bridged up every aspect of himself. And he really liked that person. He was also uh, alone and not in relationship. So just letting you know my, my personal experience with that. I can remember being so... Um, fear of inadequacy, so insecure about my knowledge of quadruple splits that the very first time somebody asked me, I think in 2015, for a reading for her quad um, son, I said, oh, can you please go watch this video on Jovian? Because I, I don't have any personal experience with it, and I know about as much as this video, you know? So with quads, I know there's a lot of challenges about finding the right way. Remember, the answer to any question, strategy and authority the answer to any question. Always your decision-making strategy. Okay? Now, it's above and beyond the mechanics that you can explain to them and then have them experiment with. Let's look at Jillian and Anderson, the co-star co here. We have a 2-4 generator in David, a 4-1 generator in Jillian. So again, a single definition, and here's the 8-1 again. Have some fun. You can see there's a commonality, common thread of the ego being undefined. Why? Because there's not many gates there. There's all of his activations. So now we can see what Jillian brings to the table and what's going on from how he's being connected. So when you're helping a quad understand their relationships, again, my highest advice, it's very helpful, if they're working with you on a long-term basis, get the parents if you can, the people who raised them if it's not the parents, and then also past relationships. Look for the commonality. Look for the um, con continuity of the bridging traits that they like, the shared uh, experience, the thread through the dynamics of the relationship. That's usually going to be the deepest area of conditioning. Because remember, quadruple splits you have four different areas of definition. That makes for a lot of different potential bridging gates. <laughs> it's so complex. It is so complex. So you're going to have to do some homework with this one. If they have ones, they're going to be appreciative of the details. You know, it will, it will help you tremendously in helping them to be self-aware about the aspects of themselves they think they lack or are quote-unquote broken or missing when we know that's not at all the case.